Hey there, my name is Kelly and I am a light worker who specializes in energetic healing as a way shower and grid worker. This video is going to detail not all but some of the pieces of my growth and personal healing journey that have led me to the conclusion made in this statement. It's a mouthful, right? So I'm going to repeat it. My name is Kelly and I'm a light worker who specializes in energetic healing as a way shower and grid worker. Okay, here's my disclaimer, right? Because I have made a video in the past about labels and how they limit. So I wanted to also make this statement, um, holding that awareness that labels limit and energy is always shifting and, and expanding into more. Uh, yes and, so to speak, it's yes and. And with that, um, with that awareness, I create the space to open and understand myself on a deeper level while allowing my current labels to fall away and new ones to come into awareness as they should so choose. I am using the current labels only as a way to convey an understanding to the listener to describe in words the energetic experience of my present being. Okay, all that being said, here we go. So. I use the term way shower to express my internal drive to share my experiences in the event that they may help light the way for others and or spark insights and activations for others to expand further in their growth and awareness of self. Much of the work I do as a way shower is accomplished through practicing awareness of my thoughts and perceptions. And by doing this, I recognize where I am clinging to or resisting energies um, allowing me to release those blocks and go with the flow. Clinging to a thought or memory, etc., holds the energy of that in our field, even if it's a good thing, right? That's usually why we cling to things because it felt good. And we want to hang on to that energy, but it, but it holds that energy in our field. And when it's held, it doesn't allow the flow of other energies moving through our field to flow freely. It takes up space and it creates that block that the new energies and experiences have to work harder to find a path to flow around. The same is true for resisting as well. I have created and shared a lot of videos and posts that describe life circumstances where I was clinging on to or resisting the flow of life, and they can be found on several sites that I have, and I'll post those links with this video. Energy healing and how it relates to the personal flow of energy in relation to the universal flow of energy is my passion. I am drawn to and trained in several energy uh, healing modalities, including healing touch and Reiki. And my practice as a board certified holistic nurse is greatly supported by energy healing concepts. And I incorporate those as much as possible into um, my practice. This in also includes the energy of not only our physical bodies, but our mental and emotional fields, which are our thoughts and perceptions and how we respond to them and how they affect our behaviors and self-realizations and personal growth or lack thereof. Throughout my growth and development as a human being, I found that the more self-reflective and personal growth work I do, the more deeply I come to know my true self, my spiritual essence, and the further my energy and connection to spirit expands outward. I've come to sense this pattern as an outward expanding spiral. The pattern consists of connecting and grounding, and then centering, and then clearing and releasing, and growing and expanding. And at the point that we're growing, growing and expanding, we usually find ourselves in uncomfortable situations because growth is uncomfortable, right? <laughs> if you're not comfortable, you're probably not growing. I'm sure you've heard that statement. So usually when that happens, when we find ourselves in uncomfortable situations, we need to go back to the beginning and ground and recenter and all of that again so that we can continue to grow and as we're doing this when we go back to the beginning we're not going back to the beginning as the same person we're going back to the beginning having grown up some sometimes a little bit sometimes a lot so that that's where i get the vision or the picture or the image of an outward spiral as we grow and expand in that pattern so knowing that pattern provides me and now you because i'm sharing it with you with a mental concept that acts as a structure or foundation in which I can reflect on and use as guidance to support me in the process of expansion. So if I know where I'm at in that spiral, I know the next step. It guides me to the next step I can take to continue um, expanding in the spiral. Essentially, it's 
creating a grid to build off of. And this is where my grid worker label comes into play. My entire life, I have been lit up by sorting and organizing things, whether it's toys, clothes, data, thoughts, etc. And I put them into neat little packages to help simplify life for myself and others. Not only does the sorting and organizing simplify life, it also acts as a structure or a grid in which to build from and provide future organization and guidance, clarity and expansion. I didn't know what I wanted to be when I was growing up and college didn't sound appealing to me when I graduated high school. So I went to work in a factory that made radio components and I worked there until life circumstances guided me to the field of nursing. And actually, I think a statement that better captures the essence of that was that life circumstances led me to the calling of nursing. It was always their calling and the my path of life unfolded to it. So you will find me rephrasing things to capture the essence of the energy that I'm trying to convey. Um, so yeah, just a little disclaimer there on that. Anyway, throughout my nursing career, I've been surrounded with so many opportunities for energy healing and way showing and grid working. Uh, I just didn't have the terminology and the labels for it at the time. I've been drawn to it I just didn't know that's what it was called and that's what I was doing, right? And as I consider the word and the term grid working, how I wish or choose to describe the essence of it right now is intentionally creating an organized energetic structure in which to build a strong foundation of growth and expansion as well as provide energetic guidance. So. That is my personal definition for grid working. Okay, so here's some examples of doing that. As I previously stated, I'm a nurse and nursing utilizes the structured process of, uh, it's an acronym, ADPIE, A-D-P-I-E, which the acronym stands for Assessment, Diagnosis, Planning, Implementation, and Evaluation. So that process is the main foundation for the healing work of nursing, intentionally using ADPI for the purpose of healing on behalf of the patient is energetic grid work. The additional awareness and utilization of the holistic nursing concepts that, um, that having that knowing and, and those skills can bring to it, add further richness and depth for the patient's experience and the nurse's experience as they're helping the patient in healing. Uh, the same is true for any healing modality. For all those same reasons, it's energetic grid work. Another example um, <laughs> that's a tangible example from my current uh, season in my career is creating and updating policies, tip sheets, documents, guidance videos, etc. These are all tasks that I do on a daily basis that become an extension of my being and spiritual practice in this life when I complete them with the intention of creating the grid of information as an organized structure in which others can build a strong foundation of knowledge, growth, and expansion, as well as providing energetic guidance. <laughs> because quite literally, a policy tells you where to focus your energy. It tells you, it guides you what to do, where to go. And I'm using energy in so many different contexts here, but energy is a... Oh, there's so many contexts because it's such a multi-faceted um, thing, right? There's so many ways we use the term energy and it, it's all coming from the same place. So another little, little tangent there. Anyway, here are some less tangible examples of how I do grid work. And by that, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily know I was doing it or what was happening. So um, every now and then I will connect with and create archetypes of frequencies and energies like teamwork, safe, competent patient care, things like that. And I will program them into my department. And that is a whole separate video on how to do that, but I do that every now and then. And eventually, you know, that wears off because I have to hold the intention and program the intention and energy is always shifting and changing. So it naturally will um, shift and change if I don't do it every so often. Another thing that I'll do is I will connect with the higher selves of the people on my teams 
and I specifically call it out when I'm doing the work, that it's the higher selves of those individuals who give permission to contribute, to join, to participate. That's the word I use is participate. And it's always for the highest good of all, including the patients, not just the teens. And what I'll do is then I'll create an avatar of the with those higher selves, and I will work with the avatar to ground, clear, and connect the energy of those higher selves with the intention of teamwork and safe, compassionate care, or whatever it may be that we are needing in our department for as long as those higher selves choose to participate. Okay, here's a couple of my favorite examples that are less tangible uh, energy gridding in my work. Okay, so many years ago, I think this was back in 2012 or 13, after I had completed a healing touch training to the level in which I was qualified to provide healing touch for patients in the hospital, I was driving to the hospital to offer healing touch to patients that were there. I was volunteering. I had been given permission to go to my place of work and volunteer my time to uh, do healing touch for patients. As I drove to the hospital, I talked with my angels and it wasn't any specific angel. It was just the angels that happened to be working with me at the time. And I asked them to guide me to the patients who would benefit from healing touch for the highest good of all, lead me to the best patients, you know, that sort of thing. So I was doing that grid work ahead of time. That was me um, doing the energetic gridding. Once I got to the hospital, I talked with the nurses who were working to see if there were re any really good candidates for the healing touch, which patient I should go to first. And I was given a patient name and room number. So I went to that patient and I offered them healing touch and they accepted the treatment. I completed the treatment and um, for myself personally, it was a such a beautiful situation um, experience. I think experience just better captures it. It was such a beautiful experience because not only did I really get to see on a live patient their um, well, they told me afterwards they felt so much better. I mean, they verbalized their improved well-being, but I could also see it. I could see it on their face, their relaxed face, more color had come back to their face. Their, their voice was softer and more quiet, and they just appeared more relaxed. So it was really cool to see that, to, to have that experience in real life and to connect with the patient on that level of, of healing. It was just beautiful. So the experience of itself, in and of itself, was wonderful. Um, but as I continue on, it gets even better <laughs> because I had a meeting I had to go to. So I went to the meeting and then I came back. It was like a, a double, uh, uh, I got two birds with one stone in that time because I went to do Healing Touch. Well, at the same time, I had to be there anyway for a meeting. So I attended my meeting and then after the meeting, I came back. Uh, to the nurse's station. I was charting the session with the patient at the nurse's station. And as I was doing that, the hospital president came into the nurse's station and he's like, Kelly, I hear you just did healing touch for so-and-so. And I confirmed that, yes, I had. Well, it turns out that he was, this patient was a dear friend of his and he had gone, just gone to see them to visit them in the hospital and they told him that they had just had a healing touch session and how wonderful it was and they were so grateful that it was being offered at the hospital as an option for patients. So that was super cool. It was very validating um, energetically, like a, a beautiful synchronicity. Okay, here's another fun example of where I did some grid work ahead of time and it turned out to be wonderful. So just recently, just less than a year ago, one of the hospitals that I worked for had a joint commission survey visit. And um, if you don't know, the joint commission is the entity that accredits uh, hospitals for patient care, safe patient care and things like that. So I was expecting this visit because just the day before uh, they were at another site and they had said they would be at my site the next day. I also knew that from the visit at the other site that there was I don't know if maybe turmoil is a good way to put it. There were, it wasn't, it wasn't the easiest visit for them. So um, I was kind of getting warned ahead of time, like <laughs> a heads up to be ready for this, right? And the programs in the department that I was leading at the time, they were brand new and we had never been surveyed yet. So I had no idea what to expect. Uh, in addition, 
I've been through many Joint Commission surveys as an inpatient leader, and these programs that I was leading at the time, they were all, um, that I was also leading, they were outpatient programs. So I've never had gone through an outpatient survey before. So I really had no idea what to expect. So anyway, I came into work very early that morning of the visit. And since it's outpatient, there weren't any, there weren't any staff there yet. There weren't any patients there yet. And I sat in each room of the department and I did some energy work. So as I sat there, I cleared the energy of the space of the room. And then I programmed it with a frequency of calm, healing, compassion, professional knowing and discernment and safety. And that was pretty much how the day went. It, it went well. It was it's not that it wasn't without its own stressor, but the surveyor was pleasant and they were kind. They were meticulous, which is how you want a surveyor to be because they're making sure you're providing safe patient care. Um, but after the surveyor left, the directors of the organization who had worked with the surveyor the day before and then traveled to my site that day to help support me through it, they said that it was far different <laughs> the day before. <laughs> Than, um, than how it had turned out that day uh, with our survey where I was at. So that, that was good. That was another example of how I did some grid work um, in, my, in my work life. Anyway, as I share these examples, I wanna call out that the grid work I'm describing, it takes work. It requires the intentional use of focused awareness and intention. And you have to be in the right space for that. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can get yourself to be in the right space, but it takes work. And most of my examples that I describe here are from my work life, but I also on a daily basis do grid work to support the energy and well-being and growth of my family and friends. I have shared some examples of that in my videos um, previously too, but I haven't ever called it out as grid work. And that's because I'm actually just really coming to know and understand, like I said earlier, what the term is and that's probably why I'm highlighting it here and feeling compelled to create a video. That's the way shower in me wanting to shout out to the rooftops. Hey, this is a thing and it could help you <laughs> if you resonate, listen and be activated. So anyway, as life unfolds, the many pieces of it all, because these are just a few components of it. It's by no means all the different insights that I've talked about and shared and modalities that I've talked about and shared in my videos. But as they fall into, into place, uh, they provide me with insights and clarity of my spiritual essence so that I can infuse my spiritual essence into my outside world and the work that I do. And the work that I will continue to do, and I will most likely, without a doubt, continue to share with you all the different things that I'm experiencing and learning. I have recently joined a actual a community of grid workers, so I'm super excited to see what it is all about and how other people are doing grid work and helping the universal flow of energy and, and this is a oh, completely other another video too but at the same time I feel compelled to share that when I speak of the universal flow of energy I'm speaking of the universal flow of love energy and and all that is and being and oneness and all that so yeah that's a totally other video <laughs> I hope you have a great day. Bye.